up. We had pet chickens, dogs, cats, even a pet penguin. How was I not going to become a vet? I love Bondi. The sun, the surf, the bright lights, the late nights, the girls. I wouldn't leave it anywhere else. Apparently someone has put their cat into a cat cage and thrown it into Bondi, so into the water. It's Saturday night and Chris is responding to an emergency call. Someone's pulled the cat out, police have taken it to the clinic. Uh, they're waiting there now, they need to talk to me, but we need to sort this cat out. Hello, how are you going? Vet students Callie and Jermaine live above the clinic and are always on call. It was completely drenched from head to toe and um, its mucous membranes, so like under its lip, is um, bright blue. This cat had no chance if if the people that were standing there didn't intervene and actually rescue the cat. Water tonight would have been quite cold, so the problem we've got right now is the fact that it's, it, we're battling hypothermia uh, and just getting its temperature, we're now on 32.7, 32.8 degrees, when normal is, is a, around 38 to, to 39 degrees, so we're dramatically low, um, and, and that's the biggest issue. We need to get direct access into its circulation to deliver some drugs, because right now, shock could kill his cat. It's, it's strange just to keep on calling it a cat, but we still don't have a name for it. The, the information we received was that we, we've arrested one person. Um, the person that was arrested had indicated that it was her animal, it was her cat, and that she was taking it down the safe and willful it. So it sounds like it's a, it, it's a deliberate act. Yeah, OK. No one knows just how long this poor cat was struggling to survive in the Bondi surf. Make no mistake, this cat's actually been in the water and been in deep, which is remarkable and, and horrendous at the same time. Infection, pneumonia, immediate dangers. It's in a very bad way. It's, its lungs are full of fluid. All I'm hearing right now are crackles because there's, there's so much fluid in those, those airways in its lungs. Um, it's battling to try and get air in, but also it's battling shock. And understandably, too, it's been through absolute hell tonight. I know he was just acting weird. And then I rang up my brother and said, Do you know what's wrong with him? And he said, Last time that that happened, it was a tick. 17 year old Lucas has arrived at the Bondi Referral Hospital Sash with the family Samoyed. The 11 month old called Polar has suddenly lost control of his back legs and can no longer stand. How long ago could he not walk? When oh. did you notice? Probably oh, about three or four hours ago was when I first noticed okay. it. If a paralysis tick has burrowed into Polar, emergency vet Lisa Chimes needs to find the killer parasite fast. Basically, what happens when they're bitten by a tick is that it causes paralysis, so the toxin goes into the bloodstream and it, and it binds at the ends um, where the muscles meet the nerves um, and it paralyzes them. So it usually starts at the back legs and it moves up. It's all right, sweetie. I know, I know. It's life threatening because it can paralyze the breathing muscles, so they won't be able to breathe anymore. Can you just give him a cuddle in the head? It's okay. It's all right, sweetie. The bewildered polar has to be transferred to the treatment room. He's got so much hair and you need to search in all the little orifices around his bum and his ears, around the mouth, so he's going to need a full haircut to try and find the tick. It's too early to tell exactly how he's going to do. Back at the Bondi Clinic, Chris is using drastic measures to try to save the cat pulled out of the Bondi surf. Now the cat won't like this, but it is for its own good. We're just trying to loosen up the fluid from those airways and using gravity to try and force the fluid out of its lungs. We've now got our first bit of good news. The temperature's now come up to 33.7. So it is climbing. It's still too early to say that it's actually gonna recover, but this is a good sign right now. From what the police have said, the owner of this cat was putting it out of its misery, was, was giving it a, what they called a good death. Now, to me, the cat looks OK. It's just one of those ones you just stand back and just shake your head out. The cat needs rest to overcome the shock. 
I'll grab a stethoscope. But when he's moved to the treatment room, he takes a turn for the worse. Just since we've moved it, the, the cat has, has actually gone downhill a little bit, which, which is a concern. Now, what I'm actually going to do is transfer him to x-ray and just see if we can get a picture of his lungs and just see how much, how much fluid's sitting in there. Right now, I'd say around 60 to 70% of his lung is actually functioning. This bit of lung is what's keeping him alive. If he was under for any longer, and it may just be a matter of seconds, probably one more breath, one more intake of that salt water would have filled up this area of lung with seawater, and, and he'd be dead right now. The cat's now in one hell of a fight for its life. Oh my God, like sharing a sheet. At Bondi's referral hospital, Sash, emergency vet Lisa is giving Polar the paralysed Samoid a number one haircut. His blades aren't even cutting through half the hair. She suspects a killer tick is hiding under his thick coat. There's no sign of the tick here, so it's obviously moved on somewhere else. We've got to find the big grey female. So we shave until we find it. Good boy. Look at this. Vet nurse Victoria is called in to finish the job. Never get a vet to clip. Oh my God, you've put me to shame. I'm in the firing line there. <laughs> Anti-serum is slowly running through Polar's system to try to neutralise the tick's poison. It works just like anti-venom for snake bites. He came in roughly the two to three hours ago. He could walk on his front legs. Now he can't walk on his front legs, so the paralysis has extended up and up to the front part of his body already. She's nearly done. Good boy, you're a good boy. Easy, mate. I can't imagine how hard it would be to feel like this. Easy, baby. Stop, 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 stop. Polar is becoming more distressed. The anti-serum could take up to 24 hours to start working. Calm down. So he's started to breathe up a little bit more. His oxygen levels are reading slightly lower than they were before. So at this stage, we're just going to try him with a little bit of oxygen and see if we notice any improvement. Mm, good boy, you're so brave. Despite the extreme measures, unfortunately, the tick hasn't been found. We're just going to keep on searching throughout the night. We don't want to stress him out too much more, so now what we're going to do is just leave him in the cage, let him have some rest, give the tick anti-serum some time to kick in and, and see where he's at again in the morning. I'm sorry for your head. Hi. Yes, he says, I'm very embarrassed. Just have a nice sleep, Paula. to a woman standing at the edge of the ocean pool at Bondi Beach last night by a concerned member of the public. While the man was trying to help the woman, she threw a cage into the water. The man went to retrieve it before noticing there was a cat inside. Oh, hello. Hi. Hello, buddy. She looks good. Next morning, the cat who was left to die in the Bondi surf is more alert but still traumatised. Last night he was probably around 60% capacity in terms of the area of his lung that was actually working. Remember this? Mm. Yeah. Now he's nudging around 90%, I'd say, just listening to his chest. The lungs sound clear, there's none of those awful crackles that we had last night. I've decided you don't mm. Chris and Sarah are trying to tempt the miserable Moggy with some chicken. It's hot chicken too. Let's, let's not underestimate yeah. the effort that we've gone to here. <laughs> It's the real deal, man. It's... He's understandably suspicious of the entire human race. You ever heard of anything like this before? Sarah? No. No, nothing like this. It's quite horrifying, actually. It's, you know, it's going to take time, and you can see why. Mm. You poor thing. You're so pretty. Yeah, he's a nice cat. A beautiful face. Big, fat face. Yeah. Yeah. When he first came in, understandably, he was absolutely beside himself. Uh, he was very scared. He didn't trust any people. We couldn't get near him, in fact. 
one. Okay. There we go. Good grab one. Off we go. It's such a horrible thing to think of that someone actually would thro throw a cat in the water in its cage um, at Bondi Beach. It's just um, horrendous. So hopefully we'll be able to get him a nice new home. Oh, there you are. There we go, yeah. <laughs> I had a visit in the clinic from a lady just the other day with a bird that is behaving quite strangely. It's attacking people. It's also having its feathers fall out. Now, I need to see this bird in its natural environment, so we're going to go and pay a visit right now. Hello, Chrissy. Chris, how are you? How are you? Thank you for coming so quickly. Oh, look at you. This is Harry. You're a mess. He's a, he's a shocker, isn't he? Harry is the pampered so pet of the obviously... equally colourful hey. Chrissy. Jeez, he's raw there, isn't he? He is, yeah. And he's back, look. That's he... extraordinary, isn't it? He, he's totally bare there. He is. Looks he's like, like a, a plucked chook. I was going to say plucked turkey, but yeah, chooks are Yeah, I know. I can't work out why his feathers are coming out. It's one of the worst cases I've ever seen. And now the first thing I'm suspicious about is the diet. I need to know exactly what Chrissy's feeding him. These are his... Beans? They are pulses. I soak them overnight. This is his red palm oil, mm -hmm. his seed, his millet sticks, his unsalted cashews. He washes it down with just a little glass of bubbles occasionally with mummy. <laughs> mummy would insist upon that, wouldn't she? And whatever he doesn't finish, you probably have to finish, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Yeah. I know I spoil him, but I can't help it. I love him. He's my baby. I could eat him. He's so gorgeous. <laughs> But going bald isn't Harry's only problem. He hates Chrissy's husband, John, and is not afraid to let him know it. Will you leave me alone? Go on, go. Tell you what, I hate that parrot. It's got to go. It's either him or me. What are you doing? Harry's hatred of John seems to start out as outright aggression, but then, oh, it turns into something quite dysfunctional. Now he's having his way with my hand. You're not jealous, are you, Chris? No, you? I'm just, I've never seen him do it before. What's Chris going to think of us? <laughs> it may look like love is in the air, but Harry's amorous gyrations are anything but. This is aggression on a new level. Yeah. Normally he's just flapping his wings, biting you. Yeah. But that is the most aggressive and most dominant-minded gesture he can give you. You never see that. That is amazing. You know, it's actually similar to what a dog does when he's trying to show dominance, but I've never, ever seen a bird do that before. It's just bizarre. Now, I'm pretty sure that Harry's violent jealousy towards John is the cause of all this mass feather fallout, but I need to know for sure. I think we should set up a little sting. Okay, so we're almost ready to go. Camera set up. Yep. One final request. Yes. Just a little hug, a little kiss, and then we leave. I'll explain later. In front of Harry. In front of Harry. Darling. Oh. oh. <laughs> this is going to send him into a frenzy. Bye, Harry. Bye, Harry. Bye. I feel so bad we're playing a trick on Harry, but we've got to find a solution. I mean, if, if we don't, he's going to be completely bald. At Bondi's referral hospital, Sash, 11-month-old Polar is still fighting the effects of poison from a paralysis tick. He was searched throughout the night for more ticks. They didn't find any others, but he, he doesn't look like he's got any more. You want to try staying for me? Oh, it seems the tick has disappeared, but Polar still has a long way to go. He's not completely out of the danger zone. I guess his swallow reflex is not perfect. Oh boy. I know you don't like your mouth being touched. There oh, always boy. is the risk that he can inhale some of his food, so we have to just feed him very slowly. And some chicken. Hey, is this better than dog food? Come on. Ah, oh, it's a bit spoilt. 
This is a really quick recovery for a tick bite. Honestly, uh, I usually find it takes about 24 hours for us to notice some improvement. And in his situation, it's been less than 12 and he's already made a dramatic change. How are you feeling about your new haircut? Hey? Feel like a new man. But the last step for Polar before he's allowed to go home is to prove he can stand up and walk. Harry, we're back. Yeah. Feathers. Oh my god. Back at the Parrot Pleasure Dome, pet detective Chris is trying to find out why Harry is losing his feathers. Well, let's find out. We've got the camera. Now come on over here and let's have a look at what we found. So we've just left the house. And he's at home alone. Ooh. And there he goes. Ah. Right there. So while you're out, or you're in bed, and he's alone, this is what he's doing. Harry is the total attention seeker. This is self-mutilation for the sympathy vote. He's he, doing it to himself. He's pulling the feathers himself. He's pulling his own feathers out. Why? He's that frustrated that he's got nothing else to take his frustration out on apart from himself. You two are more than just friends in his eyes. He's in love with me. He's in love with you. But he doesn't want to have sex with me. No. Whenever he's not with you, right. you're with John, his competition. And he's smart enough to know that. Mm. He can tell a male from a female. Right. Using his sense of smell. Don't even try it. Don't even try it. The question is, how do I stop it? I can't be with him 24-7, can I? I? I can't take him to bed with me. I can't take him shopping with me. What do I do? We're going to put him on. Are you serious? We're going to put him on Prozac. Oh, my God. And this will work? Prozac is used all around the world for dogs, cats and birds to ease their anxiety issues. It works by increasing the level of serotonin in the brain, which is the feel-good hormone. They feel better about the world. And I hope, in Harry's case, it's going to stop him getting to that breaking point. So I've got to add Prozac now to all his food. Food is another thing. He's eating too much as well. Right. Just give him some seed, small amount. Give him some greens like spinach, broccoli. He's going to become the biggest loser. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't he? Well, Harry, it's you and me. Oh, this is as close as I can get. Collar's too big for you now, huh? No hair there. It's time for Pola to leave Sash. Hello, I'm, I'm here to pick up Pola. The poison from a potentially lethal tick bite paralysed both his front and back legs. Despite his rapid recovery, the Samoid's still having a bit of trouble. Hey, it's too slippery. Come on, Pola. Come on, who's that? Come on. Who's there? Hey? Quentin is the older brother of Lucas who rushed Polar in to the emergency hospital. Tell him he's, he's saved yeah, he his dog's right life. Thing. Yeah, definitely did. You're happy to go home. You are. You're such a good boy. From now on, Polar must be checked for ticks every day. This has been one lucky escape. I was really surprised first at how he changed. His coat was completely gone. Like he went from looking like a polar bear to almost a lion. But it's just good seeing him alive, happy, strong. Good. It might be an idea that they keep him clipped. I won't tell the Samoyed Society that, but um, it's just going to make their lives a lot easier and, and help him out and pre hopefully prevent this happening again. Yeah, it looks kind of like a poodle. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> Take that as the sound that he just doesn't want to leave us. No, he doesn't. We've bonded, haven't we, buddy? Huh? A week later and the cat that was dumped in the Bondi surf is still not showing any gratitude. We can't send him home without a name. What about Huey? Short for Houdini. Oh, definitely. Houdini. Not that suits who, doesn't it? Sort of. You're going to be Houdini? Houdini had the great underwater escape trick, didn't he? <laughs> He's a real character and he deserves a great home and by the looks of his foster care, he's certainly going to be getting that. Julie met Huey. <laughs> little man. There you go, little buddy. He's beautiful. He's great. I'm in love with him. Already? Yes, look at him, he's already... He's already snuggling too. He's a beautiful boy.
I think he needs a bit of time to settle. I think he's been tortured and traumatised. Uh, but I think he's going to make a beautiful, loving cat. It's time to go, little buddy. <laughs> In fact, go now. <laughs> this is goodbye. <laughs> this is goodbye. I'll miss him. <laughs> See you later then. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Dr. Danny Dusek from Bondi Vet. If you love our show and want to see more, plus some amazing content about pets and how to care for them, hit the subscribe button. Click that little notification bell and we'll see you on our next video.